Good morning, everybody. My name is Prasad. Sorry for this. I have severe low back pain. But do this first. We need sincerity, regularity, punctuality, whether he is a student or a faculty. Sincerely, he should come to the college. He should be regular. He should be punctual. Now, coming to the subject, this is a part two, Java video. Part one already I have shown it. This is a part two, Java video. In this video, I am going to cover OOPS concepts of Java. Right. The previously the subject title was OOPS. Here OOPS stands for Object Oriented Program. Object means any real world entity is object. This duster is object, this chalk is object, even myself is object. Here object means all other variables and constants are called object. Oriented means dependent. Dependent. With objects, dependent will write programs. Program. Yes, means system or software. This now changed into JP, Java program. Oops is a theory and JP is a practical part for that. So here, Java core, Oops is a core of Java. Oops is a core of Java. Its approach is second approach to reduce the complexity of the society. The first approach will be C language. C language is first approach. And OOPS concept is second approach to reduce the complexity of the society. The C language is procedure oriented, it has some procedures, and structure oriented, it has some structures, and functional and dependent. Through some functions, we we'll write the program. And next, C is with C concepts and C features, it is semi object oriented, partially object oriented. But whereas Java is a completely object oriented concept, because of these concepts, Java is flourish a lot. Java has so much demand. Here the basic concepts are class, object, data encapsulation, data abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and extra two features are added in the institutes. Those are message passing and binding. Now we'll come one by one. Class. Class. First two concepts are Oops is class. Generally, class is a collection of students. Generally, class is a collection of students, but technically, class is a collection of members and member functions. Class is a collection of members and member functions. Members means variables and constants. Variables means I already told you in the first video, variable means which is changing is called variable. Constant, constant means which will not change. Variable and constants are members and member functions are methods and objects. Here method is printed, these are input methods and these are user different methods. User different methods. And objects here, this one is objects. The syntax for creating objects. This is a collection of members and member functions. It's a class. Next second one is object. Here object definition is object is a blueprint of a class. Object is a example of a class. The syntax for creating an object is this one. Say this is a class, class name, you can give anything. Use a different class name. And class, object, and the new, new is a keyword here. New is a keyword. And this is a constructor, same name as class name. This is the syntax for creating an object. Here. This is a program. Syntax is a semantic program. Explanation of this theory part. This is a practical part. This part. Class. Example of a class. And object. Right? Now coming to third proof concept. Data encapsulation. Data means information. All keys in the keyboard is called data. I already told you. Encapsulation. In the general English, encapsulation means capsule. Binding the medicine in the capsule to give security. Here, Java has more security. In the features of Java, it is robust, more strong than C, C++, .NET, and any, any other languages. So it will give security through class. Generally, C program starts with main. C program starts with main and the program continues. Whereas Java program starts with class, in the class we have main. Java program starts with class. In the class, we have main method. 
so it is bided bided with class so it was more secure so data encapsulation definition technical definition goes something like this binding or wrapping data at one place is called data encapsulation technical definition this is also example of the theory part practical part and now data abstraction abstraction means hiding unnecessary data here technically abstraction means hiding unnecessary data example is system card or not printer there is so much explanation behind this but we don't know all the things here system is a inbuilt class yesterday i have told you inbuilt class this class will be there in this package either lan or io package start with our process and interfaces this out is a variable inbuilt variable this print method is there in this class this class is there in this package that will be abstracted i but we see only this output sum of this three variables this three variables is constant i will get this in later right so that is called data abstraction the definition is higher abstraction means hiding unnecessary data to the user is called data abstraction. next one fifth one is inheritance inheritance means generally we will acquire the uh, features of our four parents our grandparents our uncles and all here technically inheritance means acquiring the properties of super class into sub class parent class into sub class the technical definition is acquiring the properties of super class into sub class is called inheritance again in inheritance we have so many types that is single inheritance single class parent to class child it is extends keyword yesterday i have told you some words keywords we have 50 keywords this is one of them with this keyword this parent class is inherited in the child class that is single multiple inheritance if you have class 1 class 2 class 3 if you write extends all data will be imported means reusability will be there what is the use of inheritance if you write a use code here if you want that use that use the code again and again no need to type again and again with this extended keyword you can import you can download all code into subclass parent to child class that is called inheritance multiple and multi-level inheritance is also there but that will not support java that i will tell you in the later video part next part videos and multiple inheritance multi path inheritance here it is multi path inheritance multi path many path next hierarchical inheritance hierarchical means something like this hierarchical inheritance. next last one is hybrid inheritance hybrid means mixing of other two inheritance mixing of these two inheritance is called hybrid so we have totally six types of inheritance so next coming to six groups concepts is called polymorphism generally poly means many morphism means forms many forms for example take myself i am a object here i am a object i am i am a, a teacher to you and i am student to my professor i am son to my father and i am father to my son and friend to friend one object is acting differently in different situations Similarly, technically, polymorphism means technical definition is one method or object will act differently in different situations. One method or one object will act differently in different situations is called polymorphism. And again, it has two types one is method over coding, and the second one is method over writing. First one is method of loading and second one is method of writing. Method of loading will be done in the same class, over load. Same class, over load. Method, same method name, but different parameters. In TA, if you write in the same class, in DB, you will write in DB to different shape. And method of writing will be done in the different classes. 
method of writing in Python in the different classes. For example, this, this will come under this example. I have covered all this root concept except this one in this program. Class parent has add method, add method in A, and in class child has add method same in A. It has two methods, two over writing. Method of writing in Python is the different classes, class A, class parent, and class child. Next, coming to message passing. Message passing means we'll pass some message. General. Here in technically, message passing means these are called as brackets are called parentheses. These brackets are called parentheses. And these are called parameters. This A is called parameter. This 5 is called argument. This argument will pass to this one. This argument will pass to this one. This is called message passing. And again, next one we have binding. Binding we have two types. Static binding and dynamic binding. Here static binding means we will pass values, output values or input values at compile time. At compile time we will pass values is called static binding. In compile time we can pass this constant values for the variables. If you want to add some of two numbers, the two numbers constant values in the compile time we can queue. That is called static binding. Whereas dynamic binding, dynamic binding means at the runtime, we will give the values at runtime in Java. It's called dynamic value. These are eight topics of proof concepts. There is practical part for this. Write a Java program for some of proof concepts. Practical part for this. Here, yesterday I have told you import. This is just like include. Import all classes and all in this program. Include. Download it. Here Java is a library, language and package, star means all classes and interfaces. Yesterday I went to you. Yesterday I told you IO. IO means input output package. Here the language is language. We have almost nine packages. And if you search in the Google, you find more. Here class parent. Class parent. Parent P is a capital because it's a class. User defined class. The naming convention is P should be capital. Void, void means returns nothing, it's a keyword, add is a user defined method, user defined method, int is a data type, a is a variable, variable means which varies, which will be changed, system, system is a inbuilt class, it's a inbuilt class, because it's a class, the a should be captured, out is a inbuilt variable, inbuilt variable, and print error, print, print should be p, small letter, it's a inbuilt method, it's a user defined method, it's a input method. LN means next line, it's next line. Here multi means we are doing multiplication. Double quote, it will be printed as it is. Plus means concatenation symbol, concatenation, adding symbol. A into A, multiplication. We are doing multiplication of two values, same values. When you pass this file, if it goes here, it will be multiplied and it will be given also. And here, class chain. It's again, it's a user defined class. Because it's a user defined class, class, the C should be capital. Extends is a keyword to do inheritance in parent. Parent class will be inheritance. Parent class will be inheritance. Void means returns nothing. Again, add is a user defined method. Int A is a data type, A is a variable. Again, system dot out dot print error. Here they are doing sum. Sum of these three variables. Sum of these three variables. These are two classes. One class is extended in other class. So it comes under inheritance. The class definition will be program starts with the class. And object here they have created data encapsulation is also there. And data abstraction. ID compresses and data. The system dot out dot printer is also. Method of, blow, method of writing. Go writing will be done in the different classes. Class parent extends class child. Two classes extends inheritance. This add will be method of writing. Method of writing. Here this is this box. This box is a syntax for creating an object. Here we have public. Yesterday I already told you in the part one video public, private, product, default. These are access 
specifiers in static, these are access modified, static, native, volatile, final we have seven, what means? That, that I am telling the data. What means it is nothing? Main is a inbuilt method, the program starts from here. We have to save this, this, this class, save the program with the chain in our Java because the main method is the chain class. Stay. String is a inbuilt String is a inbuilt class because it's a class it should be captured. Ops, Ops is a array. This is a symbol of array. And this is the syntax for creating an object. Chain is a class. C is an object. Variable. You can put C or any variable. New, new is a keyword and class. This is a constructor. Chained method. The same name as class name, this is a constructor, definition of a constructor that I will tell you later. Semicolon, this box is a syntax for creating an object. This is a single line comment. And here we are giving C dot add file. Add file. Why is message passing here? Argument. This argument is passing to this parameter. And output. We will get the output. Here C add. We have created chain the class object. Change the class object, so this will be the output. So we will get the output as sum colon 15. Here we will get sum colon 15 is the output. Thank you.